Hey, hey, guys, I guess I'm live. <laughs> I was waiting for it to tell me I was live. I think I was live. And, you know, then sometimes I go too soon and it hasn't gone live yet. So sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sure that was a lovely introduction to me greeting you all. Welcome, welcome to another Wine Wednesday with Jen. And I'm so excited to be here. I, the time, this is the latest I think I've done it. I usually kind of try and pick the happy hour time to do it because I'm ready by 4.30 to have a drink. And I just didn't realize what time it was because with this time change that we had here, I know not all of the states um, are abiding by this time change thing. <laughs> I, I think Arizona is the smart one. I think they're the ones that have decided not to have like the daylight savings time ever. So they're always the same time. I think that's kind of smart. You know, it's only been an hour difference and it just, it's messing with me. I swear. Like I was super sick last week, got totally better. And this morning I just woke up feeling really funky and weird. And I think it's because this time change, it's like just one hour. And it's not like, it's not like I have to be at the same time, the same place every day. Right. So it's not like it shouldn't affect me. It shouldn't make it freaking difference, but I don't know what, I'm just off today. Maybe that's it. And I'm using, I'm using daylight savings as the excuse, but whatever. The point is though, it's lighter out right now than it normally is at six o'clock. And so I didn't realize it was six o'clock and I actually was planning on going for a little walk outside, which I'm still going to do. So I'm going to have a little wine with you and then I'm going to go walk outside because it's beautiful out there. And I think that it's okay if I have a little wine and we'll go for a walk. I think that's perfectly fine. Don't you think so? So uh, if you happen to be joining me live, please say hello and tell me you're here. And if you feel inclined, you could tell me if you're celebrating anything. You could share with me what your favorite wine is. Uh, and I always like to have a different kind of wine and kind of share with you a little facts about the wine and then talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. And I usually have something up my sleeve and I have a couple of things I think it'd be fun to talk about. So I'll talk about those too, uh, unless you guys change the subject or like unless I go on a tangent as I often do. So because it's so nice out, we've had some really beautiful weather this week for the most part. We had one kind of icky rainy day, but uh, we had, I think it was Monday that was like completely and Sunday too. So nice outside, like almost 70 degrees. I think we actually did reach 70 on Monday maybe and so sunny and so it really is beginning to feel like spring and it's so fantastic. So I thought I would have some of my favorite springtime, summertime wine, which is Vino Verde. And I think I may have talked about this on this channel before. I can't remember. But um, even if I have, guess what? I'm talking about it again, because why not? Repetition. There's power in repetition. For those of you who don't know that, um, I'm from an advertising background. And, you know, it was always a fact that, you know, someone had to hear a radio ad three times before they remembered it. Um, now, I think the, the new statistics are, um, I think it's seven times before someone buys something, they will have to uh, have some kind of interaction with you or your brand seven times. So whether that's, you know, a phone call, uh, an email, you know, um, a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation, an ad in a newspaper, um, a jingle, whatever it is, seven times. That's a lot, right? Seven times. So repetition is super powerful. And um, if you're anything like me, uh, you love to put a song that you love on repeat. I'm one of those people that like plays a song over and over and over, especially if I really love it. I can't help myself. I am just compelled like a, you know, three-year-old child listening to The Little Mermaid. I just love it. And uh, I also repeat myself a lot and repeat the things that I love a lot. And so here I am again, repeating more information about Vino Verde. So uh, Vino Verde is a wine from Portugal. It's a Portuguese wine specifically. So um, when you see the Vino Verde, on the label, you know it's from Portuguese. And a lot of, a lot of like um, wine connoisseurs or um, sommeliers um, or the wine stewards at the grocery stores, but kind of, you know, snob up their nose a little bit at you asking for a Vino Verde because it's not necessarily 
the most refined wine, right? It's a wine that um, you, it's kind of meant to be drunk right away. Um, my kind of wine, let's get drinking. In fact, why am I sitting here talking and not drinking? And um, it's also, um, so it's one of those, you know, it's a wine that's not supposed to be aged for a very long time. And it's also a low alcohol wine. And that's actually kind of one of the things that I really like about it. Uh, as I've gotten a little older, I have noticed that that high alcohol kind of affects me a little bit more. And so I just sometimes need a little tiny buzz to get me going. And also when it's like a hot summer day and you just kind of want to be drinking all afternoon without getting totally drunk, <laughs> um, or, you know, if you want to get totally drunk, now that's a different conversation and I get you. I, I, I understand what you're talking about. But um, if you just kind of want to like a little bit light buzz and you kind of want to keep drinking all afternoon, this is the perfect wine for that. So Vino Verde is actually, um, the Portuguese translation for Vino Verde is actually green wine. Okay. So thus the green label on this particular bottle, which I love. And um, I'm assuming that just kind of means it comes from a green grape. And so it is so delicious, guys. So one of the things that I really love about this wine is that it has this sort of effervescence to it. it there's like a light um, bubbliness to it that it kind of dances on your tongue. And it's so great because it's not like your typical champagne or I love Prosecco and champagne, but it's a softer, it's a softer one. Oh, yay. We've got a viewer here. I got to move my thing out of the way so we can see who it is. And by the way, I can't for some reason, i I can't type on it. Oh, it's Sherry. Yay. Welcome. Welcome, Sherry. So glad to see you. And yes, get a large glass of wine for yourself right now. Do it. Do it. Um, if you can, of course. So um, <laughs> don't mean to be like bossy or anything. Um, but anyway, uh, where was I? So anyway, this wine, Vino Verde, um, having some Vino Verde, Sherry, has this really nice dancing on your tongue. It's like my new favorite thing to say about wine <laughs> that I love, but it's true. I love that. And um, and it, it's just softer than your typical Prosecco or Champagne. It still has a little bit on there, but it's not as strong. And so originally when the Portuguese started making this wine, they actually thought that was a um, uh, an error in the bottling process. They thought that was something that was bad and they started taking out that sort of bubbliness and the people that were drinking it were like, wait, 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 we love that about the wine. Don't take it out. So they changed their process or went back to the, the error that they did in the original bottling of some kind. So that it continues. So it still has that. And in some cases, I think some, um, some wineries who make Vina Verde, they'll actually add carbonation in. Now that's not really what I think is cool. I don't, I don't think it's really cool necessarily to add carbonation, but whatever the bottling process is that makes that nice softness. I love it. So let's pour myself a glass. And Sherry is saying that you've got an empty house, so no wine. What? Sherry, this is like this weekend. Okay, may this be a prompt for you to please go grab yourself, next time you go to the grocery store, like a couple extra bottles so that you have um, backups. You got to have the wine backups. This is what I do with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a huge fan of pizza. And so I got to have the backup pizza. And so like when you are like starving or like if you're dancing till 10 PM, you come home and you don't really feel like um, making a whole meal or you didn't feel like stopping at Burgerville on the way home, you, you, you make yourself a little leftover pizza, right? So it's the same thing. Like you got to have a little leftover wine hanging around in your basement, you know, take, get a bottle and put it in your shelves down there. And so you always have some. <laughs> My tip of the day. All right, so you can kind of almost see there's a slight bubbliness to it, but it's not like, you know, like champagne, it's like constantly bubbling up. It's not like that. It's just a little softer. Oh, I can't, I haven't had Vino Verde in so long. I can't wait to try this. Mm, it's as delicious as I remember. So a couple of facts about this particular um, bottle um, is that um, the the Alianca brand, it actually, the winemaker's theme for Alianca is art, wine, and passion, which I love. I mean, isn't that just fantastic? Alianca, uh, white wine, art, and passion. Like three things I absolutely love in a bottle um, along with the wine I love. So no wonder I love this stuff so much. Mm-hmm. And um, also just to note that Vino Verde, the name Vino Verde refers to the region and not the grape variety, 
which you probably already figured out since all Vino Verdes are from Portuguese, Portugal. So um, it's, it's a good it's an indication of the actual region where it's made, which is Portugal and not, not the actual grape variety. So they, these are confusing things. So in the States, a lot of times the wine is the um, variety and over in Europe, a lot of times the wine name is from um, the region. Just kind of a little tip for you, but it's not always the case. That's not hundred percent always. So, um, but that's kind of what I've found in general. So um, Sherry is saying that she has the kids and um, when she takes them home, you're hitting the store um, and you make a Verde sauce and you used to live on Verde Street. Oh my God. Well, then you are meant to drink some Vino Verde, don't you think? I totally think you need to. So yeah, this is Alianca. I'll show you again. And there's a lot of other brands of Vino Verde. Um, this is one of my favorites. Um, here, the New Seasons carries it as well as Whole Foods, although Whole Foods only had like one variety when we first started going there and we asked them to get more, um, which the wine guy was not thrilled with. But Whole Foods, if you do have a Whole Foods near you, Sherry, they're really good about stocking things that you ask for. So you, that might be something you want to consider. Also, like the QFC and Fred Myers here has a couple varieties of Vino Verde. And I think even the Safeway here had one or two. This is, like I said, is my, one of my favorites. And it's I, the main place where they um, have it is here is at um, New Seasons. But like I said, because we requested the local one carry the... Um, the local Whole Foods carry it. So, so it doesn't necessarily mean Whole Foods is really good about carrying what you locally ask for. Although ever since Amazon bought them, we have noticed that there's been a lot of changes at the Whole Foods. I don't know if you've noticed that too, Sherry. I don't know if you've sh shopped at Whole Foods. Um, but um, here I'm going to hold it. She, she just actually requested that I hold the bottle again. So I keep holding it. I keep like taking it away, don't I? Here it is one more time. I'm going to hold it slowly. And you can see it says on there, Vino Verde. And there's lots of other bottlers who make Vino Verde, but they're all from Portugal. They're all Portuguese, kind of like quaffing wine, as I say, um, because you can easily quaff them. And it's a low alcohol wine. So you can just sip and sip and sip and just have like a slight buzz and not get too drunk. That's kind of why I like it. So perfect for me since I'm going to be taking a walk after this today. Um, and, and you are saying you're headed to Fred Myers. Awesome. So I bet you Fred Myers will have one. Just look for the section. I think Fred Myers does a good job of, um, doing the sections by the, um, region, right? So they will have like a Portugal section or a Portuguese section, and I bet you'll find it there. And if not, just ask one of the people there. Um, but I bet you'll have luck finding it. I just love it. It's so fantastic. When you have some sherry, you'll see it's like a nice, like sparkling your tongue. It's just really nice without being too harsh. Um, and like I said, low alcohol, so you can have a whole glass and not, not be too buzzed. I had last night, I went to an event at pregame which is what I thought would be fun to talk about today. Um, and I had a glass of red wine and I had like this much and um, I felt so terrible this morning when I woke up. And like, I, I think I opened up this um, segment, this video today saying I felt really off and I'm not sure it's because of that. If it's because I have this cold thing going on, I'm not sure if it's because of the time change. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why I could be feeling a little off today, but it could very well be because I had some red wine because I have noticed lately that I, that red wine is kind of unpredictable for me. Um, and even though it's my favorite and I love Pinot Noir, it's like, I think it's the sulfites in the wine or in the bottling process. And I am really sensitive to sulfites more and more lately. So um, I think when, I, and weirdly enough, like when I'm being social with family and drinking lots of red wine, I swear it could be any kind of wine and I'm like totally fine. Um, but I think if I'm just hanging around by myself watching TV, uh, it like really affects me more. So I don't know if it's the, like the energy of being around people helps me use that energy in their red wine. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just all in my head. Who knows? You know what I mean? But, um, anyway, uh, in any case, white wines tend to be a little safer choice for me. Um, and, uh, even though I'm not, uh, white wines can also give me a headache. So I have to be careful with white wines too. So wine, white wines that don't have as much sulfite. So that's why anything with a little bit of sparkle to it, 
tends to be safer choice and um, Prosecco and Champagne are the reason why I drink those because they just don't have as many sulfites and, or if any. Um, and so they are really, really good choice for me. So any hoot. So that's what I'm drinking today, Vino Verde. And this event that I went to a pregame last night was really fun. It was an event by this gal. Her name is Sarah Dahl and she's a doll. <laughs> and she basically is a stylist. And she talked about how um, to, um, dress yourself for your brand, which I thought was very appropriate because I have been thinking a lot about how to represent myself in my videos, when I'm at an event talking, when I'm meeting with the clients. When I was in the corporate world and I was working in radio, I kind of dressed up a little bit more, but now I dress a little bit more casually. I still like to look nice, uh, but I tend to dress a little bit more casually because I've noticed, and I think it's also not just because of the fact that I'm not in radio anymore. I think it's just kind of the trends now are a little bit more casual. Like you'll see like a, um, a, a nice dress pants suit that might have like look almost like an athletic pants, but it's actually a dress pants. And, but it's like, it's, you know, it's dress a dress pant because it's got like black satin and like a more of a traditional waist rather than like your sweatsuit pants, right? I don't know if you've noticed this, Sherry. I just feel like in general, maybe especially in the Northwest, people tend to dress a little bit more casually. And um, I kind of, what I will often do is I will adapt what I'm wearing so that I can go from like a meeting to go to dance because a lot of times I'll have like a meeting in the morning and meet with a client and then I want to be able to go straight to dance class. And so I'll wear like my black dance leggings um, with like a nice little shirt, some high heels. And then when I get to dance, I can just quickly change into something that's a little like a dance t-shirt and sports bra, um, using the same exact pants. Right. But then you have to be kind of careful because you don't want to wear the same pants that are like kind of always getting stinky, sweaty, smelly and have, be it like all stinky at a meeting with a client. Right. Um, and so I've been thinking about that and I gave away a lot of my clothes because I really just didn't like them anymore. I didn't feel comfortable anymore. I want stuff that represents who I am and what my brand's all about. And so what I thought was really awesome was that, um, this gal last night was talking about how, well, of course, for me, I was just loving it. She was talking about how she believes that you should dress for the kind of gear that you want. She's like, I used to do this all the time when I was a kid. Like when we do back to school shopping, I, she said she would think about the kind of like year that she wanted to have the kind of person and friends that she wanted to have and how she wanted to represent herself. And so she would build her story for the year. And then she would pick out the road robe that matched the story that she wanted for that year. And I was like, Oh my God, you're totally speaking my language girl. Because like a, like the, the clothes that you wear can like then like help you fulfill your fantasies. Right. So if you see yourself speaking a lot and wearing like maybe a really nice, sexy dress on the stage, then you just buy yourself some nice dress, sexy dresses and, you know, make a couple phone calls to become a speaker and voila, you're a speaker on stage with all these nice, sexy dresses. Right. So it's kind of like the, um, the clothing, that you pick out can help make your fantasies come true, which I was loving. I was loving it. Um, and uh, she was also talking about like, you want to also think about um, in terms of storytelling, she started talking about how you, she, you want to make a first, a really good first impression with people, which most people know, right? But she's like, people don't always think about the lasting impression you want to leave with them. And so you want to do both. And so I said to her, well, like, what's the difference? Cause she had, was cool because she had all these words that describe like, how she wanted to make a first impression. And then she also had a bunch of words of how she wanted to make a last year impression. And she said, well, she's like, typically when I do um, a my words for my first impression, it's really a lot about um, making it relatable to them and inviting them in and getting their attention. And then when you, the, what I think about what I want to leave, leave them with, right. When I walk away, it's more about, um, the kinds of expertise that I have and the problems that I solve. And I was like, Oh my God, this is so epic because, um, this is about, it's almost like a, like a typical sales page on a, on a website, right? You want to greet your customers and make them feel welcome and make them feel like they can relate with you at the beginning and that you understand what they're about and get their attention. Right. And then at the end, of the sales page, you want to leave them with the fact that you have all this expertise, that you have um, this knowledge and this sense of ways you can help them. So basically that's kind of how she dresses, which I thought was amazing. So um, I said that to her because she was having a hard time articulating this. I'm like, it sounds to me a little bit like this. She's like, oh my God, that's exactly what it is. So um, 
a nice little metaphor for her to use in future with clients. I'm seeing someone else is here in the chat box. Oh, yay, Jay, you are here. Welcome, welcome. Um, I love it. And I'm sorry because my chat thing, my chat box for some reason is not letting me go in there and say anything, um, but I can read what you guys are saying. So looks like Sherry is saying that it would be very interesting. She dresses in suits when meeting customers at conventions and somehow you don't feel as important when you're working in your running clothes. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think it depends on who your clients are, right? Just like, just like with copy, right? You want to dress what, you know, with what it's going to make them feel welcome and make them feel like you're a professional. And yet at the same time, you want to also convey your brand and what you're about and what your values are with your dress. So if there's a way to do both, like she was talking about how she has clients who are super creative and they, they, hire her because they want to be able to add that creative touch to their clothing and, and really make themselves stand out as a creative professional. Um, and she's had other clients who really have a hard time finding the right outfit for their body style, or they have um, difficulty with the function. So maybe they're in a, a job where they have to move around a lot, um, but they still want to look really nice. And so um, there's all these different challenges. And so the idea is to think about the fit and the function um, and all that, uh, you know, how friendly it is, how like versatile it is with other outfits and as well as, excuse me, oh, whoa, excuse me, that was random sneeze. Um, as well as like the story you want to tell. And that was kind of like her main message though. What's the story you want to tell and create your wardrobe around the story you want to tell and the fantasy you have and the vision you have for your career, right? Um, and also how your changes and styles evolve, which is so true. Um, I think that's, you know, something that, you know, as we try new things and, and, you know, as our careers change or as our clientele change or as we kind of like fine tune what we're doing, I think that that changes what we're wearing also. So I love that. Um, and let's see, um, Jay is saying, well, look at what not to wear. I'm confused at what that, at that statement, but, <laughs> but um, Jay is listening in while he's playing League of Legends. I love it. Thank you for listening in. Um, you're probably like, you know, killing somebody right now. I can, I can feel it. You're, you, you're taking control of the game and killing somebody as you're listening to me talk about um, wearing stuff that's, that makes your fantasies come true and wearing sexy dresses. Um, and I love it. Jay is saying that I look younger. Yay. Thank you so much. I so appreciate that. I love it. Um, and you said, yes, she does need to know the secret. You know what? I actually do kind of have a secret. Um, a couple secrets that I have discovered lately about, um, things that can do to help you look younger. And one of them is like the bomb. I love it so much. So um, I um, started listening to this podcast and started reading the blog of The Skinny Confidential, which is run by Lauren Everts and um, her husband, Michael uh, Bostic. And she's just really, what I really love about her is she has, she just is willing to try all these different new um, different new and slash old uh, methods to beauty and um, health and fitness and all these things. And so she had this gal on recently who's an Ayurvedic person. And so this is a method that's been used for centuries, but it's called oil pulling. And it's basically what you do in the morning when you wake up is you take a teaspoon of coconut oil and you swish it around your mouth for 20 minutes, which sounds like forever. And let me tell you what it is. <laughs> But it's a really, um, it's an old fashioned technique used to pull um, all the bacteria from your mouth. And it's like a natural um, teeth whitener. And what's really great about it is it helps keep your, because it's keeping the bacteria out of your mouth, because you swish it around, you don't swallow it, obviously, because you're taking all this bacteria and you spit it out. You don't want to spit it into your sink because it's coconut oil. So you spit it into like a towel or something like that, paper towel or whatever and throw it away. But it's like this amazing way. What I really love about it is I have a super sensitive mouth and I have the hardest time finding toothpaste that don't create like all these canker stars in my mouth. And so I've really, something I've struggled with for a long time. And this is so great because it really helps clean out your mouth and it's really like nice and gentle on your mouth and it helps um, whiten your teeth. And it's also supposed to help you um, have more clear skin. And I have noticed that since I've started doing that, I've had clearer skin. And I've also been using tea tree oil, which 
like the minute I, I'm not joking, like three days after I started using tea tree oil, my face completely was transformed. So tea tree oil and then doing the um, oil pulling in my um, morning routine. It's been amazing. I'm telling you what, it's like the craziest thing ever. The other thing that Lauren suggests is that you do is you do a facial massage. And so I, in the morning, will just take a little bit of coconut oil and just like massage my face a little bit and then I'll wash before I wash it. And so it's almost like a little bit of oil pulling on my skin as well. But the idea is that you're, you know, overnight your, your skin like gets these pockets of fluid in it. And so by using a massage, it helps like kind of drain all that fluid out. And I swear it's helped me a ton. So um, a couple little new little tricks that may or may not work for you, but I love them. I think they're fantastic. I highly recommend. Um, it's getting confidential. It's a fantastic, um, fantastic blog uh, and um, podcast. And it's just very progressive. I love it. She has tons of different fitness experts on there and um, a lot of like alternative ways of looking at, at taking care of yourself um, and looking beautiful. So good stuff, Sherry. Highly recommend. And I, yes, I will put that um, in the description below so that all of you guys can find it easily. And she actually has a YouTube channel too. Um, I prefer her podcast probably more than anything, mainly because I like podcasts. I've, you know, you know how I talk about podcasts all the time. I'm always driving around in my car and um, it's just a great way for me to intake information. It's what's really interesting is I'm not normally an auditory learner because I am super visual and I'm super, I'm a very a feeler. And so if someone's like talking to me, I'm like, like feeling it more than I'm listening. I'm, I'm obviously I'm doing both, but what's weird was with podcasts, like it's a really fantastic way for me to learn. I think maybe just because I can focus on it when I'm in my car and there's not much else going on, except for, you know, obviously I have to concentrate on the road, <laughs> but, um, I don't know what it is about podcasts. I just really love it as a way of learning. So Anyway, um, and Sherry is talking about the little back dress. I love, okay, Sherry, I'm curious, like random factoid here. I'd be curious to know how many um, black dresses you have because I have many little black dresses and um, I'm kind of obsessed with that. And my friend, Laura B, that's like her thing. Like she loves a little black dress and I totally agree. Like everyone's gotta have a little black dress, but I think you should have a little red dress too. I'm also a huge fan of red dresses. Um, and it's kind of one of my favorite colors to wear. So, um, and gosh, my, my comment box for whatever reason is like stuck. So I can't, I can't scroll down further. So that's okay. I, if you guys keep typing, I'm sure whatever you've typed recently will come up. So if I'm missing a comment you're making, I apologize. That's all it is. It's just my computer seems to be stuck. I think I've, I think my scratch disk is full or <laughs> getting full. Um, anywho, so uh, I feel like I was on a tangent off a tangent there, but the point is, is that, um, you know, it was a really great event last night that talked about how to like really style your brand based on the story you want to tell and the fantasy you have. And I just love that. Um, the other thing that she suggested, which I totally, totally agree with is um, she talked about how when you go shopping, you should try a lot of stuff on because a lot of times you think something's not gonna look good on you because as, especially as women, we kind of have a really good idea of what fits our body style because we've tried on enough things that we know like, oh, this style of dress is gonna look great on me. And this, you know, this kind of blouse probably won't type of thing, right? Uh, depending on our shoulder size and our chest size and, you know, um, all that stuff, right? Our proportions, we, we all have our individual proportions and we kind of get an idea for what fits us well. So, but then we kind of get kind of stuck in a rut and we're, we kind of think that we know exactly how something's going to fit when sometimes we just actually don't. You can't always tell when you look at something on a hanger how it's going to fit. And so she highly suggested that you go and try a lot of stuff on and just take, just try like three things on that you kind of you, that you really love that you might not think will fit you, but if you love it, try it on anyway and see how it fits. And this, this is something that I totally believe is true because when I first, um, uh, got out of college, I worked at a retail store called the G machine. I've talked about this before. And the G machine was a denim place that had jeans. Right. Um, and at the time when I first started working there, I really was somebody who didn't wear a lot of jeans because I have, um, 
have kind of these strange like proportions when it comes to my waist. I have like a long rise, which is like the distance between my crotch and my waist. So it's really long, but I'm short waisted, um, which is like the area, you know, it's, it's like the distance between my chest and my waist. Right. So it's hard to find stuff that's like flattering. So a lot of times when you're short waisted, you want to wear stuff that's a little bit lower, um, like got, got a lower waistline, but that wasn't always flattering on me because I have a high rise. So it's kind of hard to explain. But um, the point is, is I didn't know that before I started working at a gym machine. I just couldn't figure out why I couldn't find jeans that I liked. The point is, is that one of the things that we were required to do was to try on all the jeans when they came in. They really wanted us to have a really good idea of how jeans fit. And so not just try it on by ourselves, but we were required to kind of try on jeans for each other so we could kind of see, oh, those jeans look really cute on Cherry and those look really great on Tony, um, but they look terrible on me, right? So you had an idea of which body styles I kind of fit for and why. And so what was really great about that is a, I got to the point where I, when someone would walk in the store, I almost immediately knew exactly what jeans that would look good on them. So that was fantastic. Obviously, the, the effect of that was fantastic. But also, you always get surprised at what will look good on you and what wouldn't. Because when you're starting to try on stuff, you like, oh, like, oh my God, these look amazing on me. So then I got used to, okay, I actually could find several pairs of jeans that I love that look good on me. So I think that's true for um, any clothing store that you might go to. So if there's a store you really like, like let's say, you know, you really love um, Express, for example, and you think you know everything that's going to look good on you. And so you are only going to pick out like three things, pick out a few more things that you would never try on and just see how they fit you because you will be surprised. And then you might find something new, new style that, that you love. So I love that suggestion too. Um, let's see, I've got some new, more comments than my comment box that have come up. Let's see. Sherry's asked how I use tea tree oil. Okay, so tea tree oil I use pretty much um, with all my facial products. The best way to use it, they say you can put it directly on your skin, but they, they, they don't. They, it can be harsh, especially if it's sensitive skin. So I put a couple drops in my face wash. And I put a couple drops in my moisturizer. So I use it both places. So it's it's there for me in my face wash and my moisturizer. And I use the essential oil. So I go to Whole Foods and buy tea tree oil. You can buy face wash and you can buy moisturizer that has tea tree oil in it. I recommend you actually just buy the tea tree oil and then put a couple drops in with your favorite cleanser and your favorite moisturizer because you're going to get a higher concentrate and um and that way you're going to get the kind of moisturizer and face wash that you've already like and that your skin you know already loves you know what i'm saying um i did buy myself some tea tree oil um what's the word toner from the body shop and that's really good and that that in particular has a higher concentrate of tea tree oil so i really like that but other than that i just use like the tea tree oil from whole foods highly suggest good stuff um and let's see uh sherry is saying that she doesn't know where dresses um, are, oh, you don't wear dresses much, but you have running, skiing, gardening, and whatever, because you're a very active person, Sherry. So I think that's one of the things that she talked about last night too, is that, um, you have to also dress for like the function, right? So, um, if there's a way for you to adapt your, um, style, to one that's more the way you like and then also still function well. So for example, let's say, you know, like I was talking about earlier, like I do a lot of dance and so I wear like leggings, but I have a couple really nicer style leggings that actually really do look like nice leggings you can wear with a nice blouse and like some heels, right? And so if there's a way you can adapt your style so that it fits both, um, that's what she suggested. So think about how you can add elements. Maybe you can just add like a really fancy pair of earrings or something like that. So just think about the kinds of, um, the values that you want to convey uh, and again the story that you want to live you know what what you want to do this year and how you want to show up and how you how you want what kind of impression do you want to make with people when you first meet them right and is there a way you can do that and look nice and then still use that for your active lifestyle I mean there are definitely gonna be times where you're just not you know like if you're gonna go running and 
you're not going to see a client before or after. Like, there's no need to, you know, adapt your running gear. Like, that's, you know, I have running gear that's meant for running. And especially here in the Pacific Northwest, like, you got to have the running gear that's going to keep you dry, right? So I think unless you're going to see a client right after, you don't need to worry about adapting your running gear for seeing a client. Uh, I would not recommend that. <laughs> but if you're like a, um, let's say you're a massage therapist, right? And you have to move around a lot, but you still want to look nice. So you have to kind of have something that's going to have a little stretch to it that's going to look nice. And maybe you still want to have like, maybe you still want to look chic or whatever, um, because maybe you have another meeting after for a different business or whatever. There's ways you can kind of pull off adding pieces with accessories or being able to change out your shirt, say pants, that kind of thing. So anyway, um, and Sherry is saying that you too, you wear petite and basically strip and down. Yeah, you totally uh, can relate with me. If you're straight up and down and you have that high rise short waist, it's like really hard to find like pants. It is. Although I will say Express, I brought that up earlier because that's a fantastic place, Sherry, to find pants. Their pants are fantastic for a lot of different body styles, but especially if you have the high rise short waist like me, um, Express is an amazing place for pants. And they have like sort of like these cute sort of, they, they're like, they look sort of businessy, but they're chic and they actually have a stretch to them, which I love. I love to have some little, little stretch. The reason, the reason I like the stretch is because of the comfort, but also they just kind of look nicer because you can wear them a little, they're more fit. Um, and they look less kind of like a frumpy business pant, if you know what I'm saying. So, um, any hoot. And, uh, Jay, we're wondering if Jay's winning the game. He must be he, because he hasn't commented. So, <laughs> so yay, we're cheering you on, Jay. And you have a bottle of something that's also an air freshener. I wonder what you're talking about. Oh, probably tea tree oil. Yeah, it's a good air freshener. And the other thing you can use it for, it's a great disinfectant. Um, so it's one of the reasons why it's so great for your skin is it's a natural um, antibiotic. And so it's really great for you to use in cleaning products too. So in fact, the bottle, if you look at it, it says you can put some with some water and then use it as a cleaner or like in your kitchen. And I also have used it in my sheets. You just drop a few oils, drops of the oil into your laundry and it's great for that too. So to your oil is amazing. It's, and it's like a really great natural um, deodorizer, disinfectant, antibacterial. It's, I mean, it's amazing. Really highly recommend it. So, um, any hoot. Okay. Well, I think I have rambled on enough. I think it's time for me to go listen to a podcast and go for a walk. Um, I will have a little bit more of my Vino Verde later. Sherry, you probably want to run to Fred Myers and grab some. So <laughs> I'll let you go so you can do that and enjoy your evening. Thank you so much for joining me, both Sherry and Jay. Appreciate it as always. And um, we will see you hopefully on Saturday morning for the chocolate breakfast. Thanks so much for being here, you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.